example, in this day and age, information emerges from every direction and is freely distributed. A variety of information gathered by servers employing the latest in high-speed communication networks and P2P technology is rapidly circulated to individuals. In fact, the speed of this circulation process is accelerating on an almost daily basis. Ask yourself the following question. What is the biggest problem facing the world today, and what must be done to solve that problem? It's a question we have all asked ourselves at some point in our lifetimes. Depending on your personal affiliations, that problem may be poverty, terrorism, climate change, access to healthcare, tyrannical government. All are problems we have considered for their scope and severity. Now, if you could humor me, I would like to propose a problem that supersedes the examples I suggested. A problem that affects all of us. A problem that may prevent all other global issues from being adequately addressed, if not dealt with soon. The problem is memes. No, not those types of memes. I refer to the term meme in its most academic sense, when Richard Dawkins coined the term in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene. Before the term was appropriated by image boards and forums, a meme was defined as any element associated with human culture. A meme could be an idea, a memory, or a quote that would be passed from one person or group to another. The concept of memes and their function came about when the aforementioned Dawkins tried to explain the spread of human culture using evolutionary principles, i.e. natural selection. When applied to nature, natural selection is the process whereby organisms better adapted to their environment tend to survive and replicate their genes through their offspring. When applied to human culture, the weakest, most recessive memes would die off while the strongest, most dominant would be replicated. For example, when the process of natural selection is applied to memes, it can be determined that the meme of capitalism won over the meme of communism at the end of the Cold War. Now you might be asking how memes could be the world's biggest problem when the natural laws that regulate them are the same that have evolved our physical existence. The answer lies in the medium through which we access most of our information today the internet. Prior to the invention of the internet, human memories, ideas, culture, and history went through that selection process. The means of distributing info weren't as available to us as they are today. Information had to pass through historians, journalists, editors, and elders so it could be processed and judged for its factual intellectual merit. If Sturgeon's law has any validity to it, that 90% of everything is crap, some form of vetting process would seem ideal. However, there's always the possibility that the gatekeepers of this information could be corrupt or at least unfit for the job. Their socio-political biases might influence what information becomes widely received as truth. And to an extent, that is what happened. Which is why the invention of the internet was originally such a blessing to those who desired the uncorrupted truth. So many people felt betrayed by how traditional institutions reported information to us, but now we could report to each other. In the words of the YouTuber formerly known as Internet Aristocrat, we were going to be the honest people. We weren't going to let other outside factors influence truth. But that is not what happened. In fact, truth has become even harder to discern. At least in the era prior to the internet, our society's gatekeepers of truth had credentials. They were scholars. They were at least not as likely to let their confirmation bias corrupt the truth. So ask yourself, what happens when that power is given to the average human being with an internet connection? Would it maybe look like this? But in the current digitized world, trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness, never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretation, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. The reason why memes are such a problem is because of our ability, or rather, inability, to access information, determine what is useful, and replicate that information via the internet. Naturally, when confronted with somebody like me, who determines the widespread availability of information to be problematic, our instinct is to assume fascism. But that is not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm advocating. My issue does not lie with our inability to control content. Personally, I would never censor any information, with the exception of calls to violence. My issue lies with our inability to create context. Create context? The digital society furthers human flaws and selectively rewards development of convenient half-truths. 
Just look at the strange juxtapositions of morality around you. When the power to determine what is truth is put into the hands of a populace that is more likely to prefer feelings over fact, to embrace ideology rather than intellect, who is going to wade through the 90% of crap, discern the 10% that is valuable, and make sure it is preserved and unadulterated at all costs? Who else could wade through the sea of garbage you people produce, retrieve valuable truths, and even interpret their meaning for later generations? That's what it means to create context. Who is creating that context? Well, you are. And I am. With every like, dislike, edit, delete, tweet, share, article, video, podcast, and blog post, we are creating our culture's context. If there is any validity to Sturgeon's Law, then there's a good chance that you have enabled the passage of lies to suit your predispositions. I've probably done it, and you've probably done it. So how are memes the world's biggest problem? With the invention of the internet, any selection process that would determine which memes have the most objective merit has been erased. Truths are now determined by which explanations we prefer, rather than explanations based in evidence. For example, I want you to ask yourself, has the American economy improved under the Obama administration? If you're a Democrat, you're likely to say yes. If you're a Republican, you're likely to say no. If you're a Democrat, you'll point to the shrinking unemployment number. If you're a Republican, you might point to the low labor force participation rate. What is the ultimate truth, and why do we not know it yet? Well, the answer is at least partially obvious. For the sake of maintaining the integrity of your party and ideology, you will embrace the arguments that support your worldview and ignore the dissent. Now, some of you might be arguing that the way to counteract this is to have open discussions and debates. Well, you'd be correct. If only it were that easy. Ah, You're in a minute. <laughs> no, you need no. to get out. You're a fucking white man. Oh, I don't agree with that. Then why the fuck did you accept the position? Look at the various dichotomies plaguing our society today. Conservative versus liberal, libertarian versus authoritarian, Keynesian versus Austrian, alt-right versus regressive left, Trump versus Hillary. How often do you see calm, rational debates on these grounds? Oftentimes, I see both sides trying to defame the character of their opponents, rather than engage each other's arguments and determine their merits. Libtard, cuckservative, feminazi, sexist, racist, homophobic, fascist, Nazi. Nobody is a stranger to comment sections on the internet. And because of this, it's not that irrational to just forego the conversation altogether, retreat into groups that share our perspectives, and assume the worst in our opponents. The untested truths, spun by different interests, continue to churn and accumulate in the sandbox of political correctness and value systems. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum. They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into the growing cesspool of society at large. The different cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No one is invalidated, but nobody is right. Not even natural selection can take place here. The world is being engulfed in truth. And this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. Imagine if you could definitively prove to a religious person that there was no God. How would that person react? What would it be like to know that something you have spent your whole life believing was a lie? Would the revelation be too much to cope with emotionally? It's a universal struggle that can be applied to any clashing of ideas. Pro-choice versus pro-life, austerity versus stimulus, etc. And oftentimes, the average individual lacks the skills and civility to engage these ideas effectively. In fact, the average individual can be so lacking and petty that they will resort to ad hominems, strawmans, and in some cases, violence to uphold their worldview. The average individual is likely to focus on micro issues like whether or not Donald Trump is a racist or the state of Hillary Clinton's health, rather than on macro issues like the exponential growth of our debt and how to fix our healthcare system. And if that average individual has enough charisma to garner a large audience, they could say anything to explain away life's struggles, and their listeners will accept it wholeheartedly and attack any dissenters. And the age of digitized communication has given even more power to the individual. Too much power for an immature species. To those of you who follow my channel who are not gamers, you might be asking about the video I keep switching to, featuring the two talking heads in the dialogue box. 
This is footage from a video game called Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, which was released back in late 2001. The footage you are seeing happens at the end of the game, where an artificial intelligence laments the future of humanity to the main protagonist. It laments the spread of convenient half-truths and other trivial information, and how it will lead to a confused, intellectually stunted populace. The AI's plan to solve this issue was to create an enormous data processing system for the internet, which could act as a filter to remove any unnecessary information. This system, objective and free of ideological bias, could allow society to diagnose and solve issues more effectively. And that plan was called Selection for Societal Sanity. Now I have to ask you one final question. If our society continues down the road it is on now, what is the likelihood that our future will see its reflection in the reality of this 15-year-old video game? When artificial intelligence is perfected, when we have machines that have a higher processing power than that of the human brain, would it be all that unlikely for that AI to control human behavior on a large scale. After all, there are large political and social organizations filled with people that need narratives in order to be at peace with how the world functions. If people can be that easily controlled, is it so hard to believe that an AI could covertly do the same thing? It's a scary proposition to unknowingly give up absolute freedom and submit to an omniscient computer program all because we abuse our freedom so much that we will avoid nasty truths in favor of protecting our fragile emotional personas. But I think there's an even scarier question that we have to consider. Is this what we deserve?